Good morning, LMCC. It is so good to be with you this morning, our final Sunday of Advent. And while a little of me, a little part of me is sad that we're in this final Sunday of the Advent season, I'm also incredibly excited because that can only mean that Christmas is right around the corner. And so as we prepare for Christmas morning, I want us to really take some time this morning to focus on celebrating the real reason for the season, and that is Jesus, our Savior. How can we celebrate Jesus, not only today, but also on Christmas? And we're gonna look specifically at our last characters, the wise men. But before we do that, I wanna pray with you. So let's pray. God, you promise hope, peace, joy, and love. You promise those things to us, your children, and God, we come to you this morning with our hands held out, ready to receive the promise of hope, peace, joy, and love. God, fill us with those things in a way that only you can do. We pray this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, let's dive right into it this morning. Here we go. it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born while shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night behold throughout the heavens there shone a holy Hey guys, we have made it. There are literally only five days until Christmas, which is just wild. And so we only have a few more stars left. And I'm sure it's pretty chilly out here wherever you guys are. And you've probably ate like nine candy canes yesterday. And you're out just picking up your last minute presents, doing just wrapping stuff city. Um, and you're probably pretty excited for Christmas. Maybe there's some presents under the tree. But I want you guys to really try and remember in these next couple days leading up to Christmas that Christmas Day is Jesus' birthday. And that's what makes it so special and amazing. And I'm sure you guys are all wondering what's the Christmas fact going to be. And the Christmas fact is actually the thing that's all over our calendar. Stars. And there's also, if you want to be kind of cool and artistic with it, there's also little mini stars that you're going to see on your sticker sheet. You can kind of go crazy with those. You know, take your own artistic 
feel with it. That's kind of what I did. But the star is actually very, very important to the Christmas story. The star is what guided the wise men to the manger in Bethlehem. They followed this bright, bright, shining star, and it took them all the way there. And that's what Jesus is in our life. He's something that can light up any sort of darkness. And so that's why it's a very, very important and beautiful symbol of Christmas that I hope you all remember out here on uh, day five. Merry, merry, merry Christmas, and I will see you guys next time. Beloved, most beauteous, and exalted king of all should be my name. Instead, they call me Humphrey. This I could bear if the worst thing of all had not happened. My dearest possession, my glorious carpet blanket, has been lost along the trail. Now I am never warm and I suffer terribly. That is why I have set into motion a plan to replace my greatest of all treasures. I carefully nudged my nose inside the caravan master's tent. This is followed closely by the chattering of my teeth, thereby letting the master know that I am most enormously cold. Success! He has not pushed me out, and I remain hopeful that a new blanket will soon be mine. Three rich caravans have joined us, and there has been talk of kings. Yet these kings bring me no joy, for they have tied three huge chests to my bare back. They are so heavy, I am sure each must be filled with rocks. The other camels are wearing the finest of blankets. They are all comfortable and warm. Not one of them thinks about me, their cousin, in pain and misery because of the loss of my most precious carpet blanket. I cry out in sorrow. I weep. Today, I continue my plan to regain my treasured blanket. I add loud sniffling to the chattering of teeth and squeeze my entire body inside my master's tent. As I do so, out rolls my master, for the tent is exactly camel-sized. It is as I planned. As the master chases me away, he tosses me a new blanket. I have success! Once more, I am covered with splendor and comfort. I am filled with delight. If it were not for the heavy chests I am forced to carry, I would be almost happy. We have followed one star for many long nights. Now our caravan enters the town of Bethlehem. Its streets and inns are crowded with travelers. My master gives no thought to my tired feet and rumbling belly. I am forced to move on. At last we reach the end of our journey. But I am confused. There is no great palace, no rich oasis, no palms heavy with fruit. I see only a lowly stable with a family inside. The three kings rejoice and rush forward to bow before the young woman who cradles a baby. Finally, the chests are taken from my back and placed before this tiny child. As each box is opened, I see no stones, only gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In this land, I have walked past many children, but never before have I felt the need to walk toward one. Now. I kneel before this baby, shivering in a manger. Watching him gladdens me more than sweet water, fresh hay, or even my wondrous new blanket. I look into the baby's eyes, and I am overwhelmed by love. I pull the treasure from my back and lay my gift carefully upon this child. He smiles, and my nose and whiskers tingle with joy. I am happy to my toes, and even without my blanket, I feel warm. Beloved, most beauteous and exalted king of all should be his name. Instead, they call him Jesus. So this morning, we're going to look at the wise men. The wise men who saw the star in the sky and knew that that star would lead them to their savior. And so they journeyed far in order to come see Jesus lying in that manger. And when we look at how the wise men celebrate Jesus, we see that they do something very specific. They bring Jesus 
gifts. When the wise men come to the stable to present themselves to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, Joseph, they come with frankincense, myrrh, and gold. The wise men come with gifts. And that is what I want to talk to you about this morning. We've already seen how we can celebrate Jesus like Joseph by listening for God's voice and then following his instructions. We've seen how we could celebrate Jesus like Mary did in cherishing the moment in the midst of the craziness. And last week we saw how we could celebrate Jesus like the shepherds by going and seeing Jesus ourselves with our own eyes. And this week I want to talk to you about gifts, which is something that is probably on the top of all of your minds as Christmas creeps closer and closer. The wise men bring Jesus gifts, but you see, they bring Jesus these gifts, these treasures, things that smell good and gleamed brilliantly. They brought these gifts not knowing that Jesus one day would give the best gift that we would ever receive, and that is his own life so that we could have new life filled with the Spirit. The wise men didn't know what gift they were going to receive from Jesus. And so they bring these small gifts to him, not knowing that they would receive the best gift of their life when God's Son would die on the cross for them. And so when we think about how to celebrate like the wise men, we see that we need to bring Jesus gifts because he gives us the best gift we could ever get. But what do you give to the person who gives the best gift? How could you ever repay that? And it looks a little bit different than what the wise men did. Because what I'm gonna tell you today is that the best gift you could give Jesus in return of his gift, which is his life for us, the best gift you could give Jesus is to say yes. To say yes to Jesus, to say yes to the new life that he gives us, to say yes to the spirit his spirit burning inside of us. That's by far the best thing we could give our Savior. Just saying yes. Because in giving us new life, in giving us a life filled with his spirit, he's telling us that we can have hope, joy, peace, and love, no matter what's going on around us. And all we have to do is say, yes, God, I want those things. I'm open. Here I am. Fill me up. And so in this last Sunday before Christmas, I pray that you say yes, that you open up your hands to him and you receive the gift that he wants to give you because that's all he wants. That's all he wants from you is a relationship, is for you to say yes to him. So let's be like the wise men and let's bring Jesus a gift. And that gift is to say yes to him, to say yes to a life filled with his spirit, to a life filled with hope, joy, peace, and love. This Christmas, say yes to him. We are doing our last Christmas craft this morning. And since we're talking about the wise men, we will be doing a wise men craft. First, let's go over all the materials that you will need. You're going to need the black frame, the plastic backing, all of the tissue paper, the piece of string and tape 
to put the string onto the ornament, glue, and you might also need a pair of scissors. So make sure you have a pair of scissors handy for the tissue paper. Now that we have all of our materials, your first step is to take that plastic backing and your glue stick and to smear glue all over the plastic. You wanna make sure that you get every little bit of piece so that when you place the tissue on that plastic, the tissue has something to stick to. Once you've smeared all of the plastic with some glue, then this is the fun part. You can go ahead and throw your tissue paper onto that plastic. It doesn't matter what order it is in or what colors go next to what. It's okay if the tissue overlays with one another and it's definitely okay if the tissue falls off the plastic. Because once you have every inch of that plastic covered in tissue, that leads us to our next step, which is to take a pair of scissors and to cut the excess tissue off. And you can do that by just cutting your scissors right on the edge of the plastic to get rid of any of tissue that's lying over the plastic. Now we are going to work with the black frame. You can go ahead and detach it from that larger black piece. You can take the white paper off so that you have a sticky side. And now you might wanna take your time with this to make sure that it's lined up. But what you're going to do is you're going to take that black frame and you're going to outline the plastic blacking with that frame. Again, make sure to take your time with this so that you can line it up correctly. We're getting close to the end here. Once your black frame is laid down, now you can work to put your three wise men in the center of that black frame. You can take the white paper off of each of the wise men and then you can place the wise men one right next to each other in the center of that frame. And then your final step is to take that little piece of string and take the adhesive. You can take the white paper off of that adhesive, make a loop with your string. Place that string at the top of your ornament and then stick the string to the ornament with that sticky piece of adhesive. And then there you go. That is your Wiseman ornament. Make sure to put that one on your tree for Christmas morning. Hi everybody, it's Caroline here, and can you believe it? We have come to the last Sunday with our Advent wreaths. That means Christmas is literally right around the corner, so get excited. Now on this very special Sunday, we are celebrating peace. It's been a hectic year, it's been kind of crazy and out of control at times, but we can experience peace through Jesus. Jesus promises to protect our hearts and our minds from all the evil and all of the bad things in this world. We, sometimes we can feel nervous, we can feel anxious, there are things that, that maybe fill us with dread even, but through all of that, we can experience peace through Jesus. He promises to protect our hearts and to give us that peace that we need in our lives. Now, to celebrate that peace today, we are going to be adding the last purple candle to the advent wreath. So we will very carefully light these. And by adding this last purple candle, that means you will have all of the purple and pink 
candles on your wreaths, leaving just one white candle left. And that candle is very special and you will get to light that candle on Christmas. Now, to prep for Christmas and to get excited, let's pray. God, thank you so much for the peace that you give us. Thank you that even though we worry, even though we feel nervous, we can always feel peace and have peace in our hearts because of you, because of Jesus. Help us to remember that and help us to have peace always. In your name we pray. Amen. Merry Christmas, guys. good being with you this morning and these past four Sundays of Advent. I wish you a very Merry Christmas. I hope your Christmas day is filled with so much joy and laughter around that Christmas tree and by that nativity and as you dig into your stockings. I miss you guys tremendously and I cannot wait to see you. Very Merry Christmas and see you in 2021. Love you.